So basically, this is the Magistrates Court Act and the questions about Section 142, right? Um, now, in the UK, uh, they've got... Uh, it, it has a collapse all or close all. Uh, but this year then, so part one is only applicable to criminal jurisdiction and procedure. Part two is only civil jurisdiction and procedure. Part three is about satisfaction and enforcement. That there could be to either of them. Uh, part four is witnesses and evidence. Part five is appeal in state cases. Part six uh, recognizes senses. And part seven supplementary. And then you've got the schedules. So basically, if something specific to criminal jurisdiction, it would be rationally in part one. So part one has got about issuing a summons, committal proceedings, pre-trial hearings, summary trial information, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. This here is only for criminal procedures. It does not apply to the civil jurisdiction. Okay. So what you have then is miscellaneous, uh, hang on, uh, appeal in case stated. All right. So appeal in case stated, uh, that there again is for both. It's not for one or the other. Okay. The right to appeal to the Crown Court. Okay. Um, so, uh, back. So the so the section one eleven that we're doing is state cases a uh, case stated by a magistrate's court. Okay. <clears throat> so, part seven is miscellaneous and supplementary. So in here, this is general, but it applies to both. Or one would think rationally it applies to both. So if we go down to section 142, okay, the, the, the heading of it is power to rectify mistakes, etc. <clears throat> the power of magistrates court to reopen cases to rectify mistakes, etc. Okay. So now the way that it's been argued in court, okay, is where they make a lot of money, the solicitors, by not applying common sense. All right. So this is really what it comes down to. Okay. And within this, even a magistrate's court may bury or rescind, okay? So now it depends where the commas come with the construction of language. So to bury or rescind, to my mind, this would be a semicolon or whatever it is, a dot and a comma. A sentence, comma, or other order imposed, comma, or made by it when dealing with an offender, comma, if it appears to the court to be in the interest of justice to do so. Now that there, with the, the reading it like that, it totally fulfills this. If we've made a mistake, then we can replace the sentence, comma, or order, which for any reason appears invalid, by another which the court has power to impose on make. So that to me is the rational way, you know, within the context of being in a general section and why on earth would parliament only allow them to correct their mistakes in criminal matters and not civil matters? It's just totally irrational that parliament would only make this for criminal matters. So if we read this in a different way now, and this is what they argue over. So the court may rescind 
uh, vary or rescind the sentence or other order imposed, comma, or made by it when dealing with an offender, comma. Do you see the difference? So what they're saying is, whoops, so a sentence or other order imposed, okay, uh, when dealing or with... anything made by it so it may not be an order it may be a simple decision anything, anything. made by the court yeah okay so they spent hundreds of thousands of pounds arguing this point failing to apply common sense because the common sense is firstly why would parliament be so stupid and only allow magistrates court to rectify criminal mistakes and not civil mistakes. But it doesn't say criminal mistakes anywhere. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, it, no, it, but it all, comes, like, it all oh. comes down to uh, made by it uh, when dealing with an offender. Um, yes, um, I, I thought there was a um, case law somewhere when um, it was successful, actually. It was a civil um, case, Section 142 application, and it was successful. Uh, oh, no, they, uh, then... yeah, no, but what they've done is, okay, so by arguing that this is only criminal, they know that it's wrong. If they've made a mistake, they should be able to fix the mistake. So how do we go around this statute? Okay, so instead of applying common sense to Mark, it, yeah, can I just add to that, please? Because I actually sent the courts a uh, uh, point of law, basically, a piece of legislation, the admin and enforcement regulations, yeah, and it automatically invoked a section 142. It just came about, remember, with my COVID fine thing. Uh, yeah, but COVID it would have depended if that they COVID it large. Was a court, but it was a magistrate court and it was a civil matter. Um, it was COVID yeah. regulations or something. Uh, yeah, well, basically, the, a lot of the COVID matters the fines were criminal classed as criminal. Okay, but really? it wouldn't. This won't be questioned if it's a criminal matter. Criminal matters, they're happy, can be done by 142. Okay? So the points with this really is, it all comes down to how do you read that sentence? Where do you put your commas? Mark. Yeah? Mark. <clears throat> when they, it went in court, if I remember rightly, yeah, last year, uh, the uh, legal advisor used the words, liability order made. Yeah. OK, so to me, to read that sentence, a yeah. magistrate's court may vary or rescind a sentence or other order imposed or made. Order yeah. made, liability order made. I don't see how they could deny if that's what they're using. Yeah, no, 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 I absolutely agree with you here. To me, not only does it read correctly, the court may vary or rescind, comma, a sentence, comma, well, in fact, a sentence or other order imposed, comma. Or made. Okay, uh, all made. Uh, yeah, no, but it, the all made, if that um, is actually, included in my, here, then my, it I, would be by it when dealing with an offender. Can I, can I say something, Mark? Um, I've been I've been reading some stuff um, like old stuff, maybe the way they used to write stuff fifty years ago, and I, and by that I mean applications mm -hmm. um, for stuff, so including the section one forty two, and the way the old uh, solicitors used to write was to avoid commas as much as possible, so that it reads like a full, uh, like like something said in one breath as in one thought. So I think it's not a question of um, 
wondering where the mist uh, the commas would be, but just read it as it is and assimilate it as in one thought. Um, I and, think that's that's how it was intended. No. And okay. Firstly, who's this intended for? The obviously, public. obviously, uh, whoever is uh, perceiving their decision to be wrong. Or mm. there's an error in law, or there is procedural uh, error. Okay, what are they claiming? Who are Acts of Parliament? Who they they are claiming Acts of Parliament apply to you and me, yeah? Yes, they do, yes. In that Therefore, sense. who's the intended audience of this Act of Parliament? Us. Okay. okay. We, the people. Oops. Okay. So it's not a matter of how does you know, a king's council or a judge or a select part of we the people interpret it. It's what does a reasonable person understand by it. So that's the first mistake that they make with statutory interpretation. Okay. You've got a select uh, uh, part of society that are making interpretations when this is intended for the general public. So it's totally irrational that, you, you know, you get into these stupid arguments. So, it, okay, a, a general member of the public will not understand that sentence. It's just a stupid sentence. Who writes like this? This is not how we taught to write at school. So why are they writing like this? But common sense is, what's the intent of Parliament behind this? And then it would be irrational to conclude that the intent of Parliament is they are only allowing magistrates to correct uh, criminal matters. They don't only deal with criminal matters, they deal with criminal and civil matters. Why on earth would Parliament just say, oh no, you can't fix uh, civil matters, you can only fix mistakes in criminal matters? That is totally absurd. And when you read the heading, okay, it says to rectify mistakes, any mistake. It doesn't say only criminal mistakes. And then when we go back to the section, OK. If it was intended only to be criminal mistakes, why on earth are they putting it in a miscellaneous and supplementary section? It would be in the criminal jurisdictions part. So no rational person, I don't see how any rational person <clears throat> can conclude that the intent of Parliament was only with Section 142 to rectify criminal matters. There's no logic behind any argument that supports that, other than, like I say, when they, a select part of society, um, starts to play with selective parts, okay? So, <clears throat> so if this here, okay, is read, to mean dealing with only offenders, okay? If that there was the way, dealing with, you know, if it was clear that this was only for criminal matters, okay, this is when you start to then apply the rules. So if the literal interpretation is this is only criminal matters, okay, and so you would start with the word offender, because that's criminal. Then you look in the context of the words around it. So, okay, made by it when dealing with an offender are the words around it. Why are those the words around it? Because it's got a separator, or. Therefore, this here is one of the options. because of the word or. So in between those two ors, okay, you've got 
other order imposed. A liability order falls within that. Okay? So, may vary or rescind a sentence. Okay? Uh, uh, that there, so a magistrate court may vary or rescind that there's one breath, a sentence, or other order imposed, or made by it when dealing with an offender, if it appears to the court to be in the interest of justice to do so. So what is the intent behind here? If it appears to be in uh, to the court to be in the interest of justice to do so. So the only way rationally this can be interpreted is they may vary or rescind a sentence or other order imposed or made by it when dealing with an offender. They could have had an order with dealing with an offender. That's also possible, but it doesn't matter. What's the intent if it appears to the court to be in the interest of justice to do so? Can I, okay. Can I can I just say something? What's really interesting in in legal documents? Yeah. Often it starts with definition. Well, they always start with definitions, so people know what what anything means. And it seems something is fundamentally wrong here if we've got <laughs> a document like this and the definition is not stated. Uh, yeah, but uh, I imagine in the miscellaneous, where we just were, yeah. okay, uh, you'll have some definitions. Oh, I'll, uh, check, I'll check that out. Thank you, Mark. Hang on. Yeah, we'll just... Mm -hmm. Mark, uh, in the Oxford Dictionary of Law, yeah. offender is specifically defined as one who has committed a crime. Uh, yeah, this is what they're arguing. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, here you go, uh, uh, Alex, okay, interpretation. So that what they've done is they've only given a definition of what a magistrate's court is. Well, that's pretty um, helpful. Um, there is another definition for, and I, I haven't looked at the legal dictionaries, but just looking at, uh, you know, the known offender, is a person or thing that does something wrong or causes problems. Um, well, that would apply to council tax, wouldn't it? And so there. Uh, yeah, but this is but but what I'm saying, we don't even need to look at the word of the the definition of the word. Okay. Like no, I agree, I agree entirely. It should be exactly as you say, but somehow yeah. it isn't. Uh, yeah, no, the reason it isn't, okay, is because 90% of the legal profession make money. Then 90% of the legal profession relies upon arguing the meanings of words. Yeah, which is disgusting. But uh, maybe yeah. change. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, there's a strong drive to the plain English, uh, 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 to the use of plain English. I mean, if you look in all of the documents and stuff like that that they're producing, they're pushing plain English. And there's dictionaries which convert legal English, legal, you know, uh, specialist words, okay, because we have specialist words for all sorts of things. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, words, you use general words for general things and specialist words for specialist thing. Now, if I'm an, you know, an architect, I will use certain words which aren't used in outside of the building industry, for instance. Uh, you know, and each specialist uh, industry will have its own uh, specialist words. So absolutely and and but the but the thing is these are specialists so the people that are dealing with each other they know what this means whereas no, they don't the honestly sorry okay but, but mark, mark there is a question this is about the legal system and it's dealing with 
uh, you know, legal mm. professionals on one hand and lay people on the other hand, which is why this whole, you know, common English, you know, to be understood is so important. Agreed. Um, yeah. Uh, well, but Mark, uh, as you say, yeah. as you say, there's a push towards plain English, and offender in plain English just means someone who broke the rule. It doesn't matter if it's a crime. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. plain English again <clears throat> would win. But my question was more um, about what to do if they ignore us, because that's their current weapon of choice. They keep ignoring. Oh, absolutely, it is. And and the only way that we're really going to get heard is by getting into the higher courts. So what do we do if they don't respond within 21 days? Do we go to Crown Court? Uh, sorry, don't respond to what? I've, um, I've, remember last week we spoke about um, Section uh, 142. Well, hang on, hang on. Can we, can we just quickly finish this interpretation thing? Okay. Now, I, 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 as many of you know, I did a, a, a specialist uh, short course with the University College of London on statutory interpretation. Okay, it included King's Council, it included barristers, it included uh, solicitors, as well as people that write legislation. Okay, now uh, the the people that wrote write legislation, every single one that brought something up. What they were all saying in common: we are trying to find clear language that is not ambiguous. However, the stuff becomes so complicated to try and remove that, that basically it becomes mumbo jumbo. Uh, and this is why you need to use common sense approach, which is just what's not being done. And the reason that's not being done is we all know the rules of equity prevail over the rules of the common law. Uh, and therefore, what's it all about? Intent. So what's intent? The intent of Section 142 is absolutely clear. To correct mistakes if it's in the interest of justice to do so. So does it really matter if it's a civil or a criminal matter? Absolutely not. And there's loads of cases that have been to the high court where they've spent tens of thousands of pounds over the years just to argue the words. It's insane. It's irrational. It's stupid. It really, really is.